Okay, hello and welcome back to Heroes of Might and Magic 3, where we're going to be playing the small-sized map Dead and Buried. And fun fact about this map, this was actually the original map included in the demo for Heroes of Might and Magic 3. So this was probably back in the late 1990s, many people's first ever exposure to this game. In the demo, you were given 28 days to complete the map before the demo would time you out. So we're going to be trying to do this in less than 28 days, and not only that, we're going to be playing on Impossible Difficulty. I am playing on HD Edition, and the reason for that is twofold. Firstly, um, firstly, it is very close to the original balance of the game from the demo, so we should be playing the map more or less as it was intended. And secondly, I am still going for those Steam achievements. I do like to go for a unique starting hero in each of my playthroughs, so for this one we're going to go with Gem, because she starts off with a free first aid tent, and the first aid skill which is not very good, but it's more useful on a small sized map than in a bigger map. So I think she's a good choice for this. We're going to go with the gold starting bonus to help make up for our lack of resources. Uh, dead and buried of course, who do you want to fight first, the dead or the buried? The dead of course in Acropolis and the buried of course our dungeon. Okay, let's jump in. Let's see how this goes. So here we go, this is our starting location. We start off with six wood elves which is actually very generous. I'm very happy with that. Uh, I do actually think that on HD edition, this town screen looks really nice. I know it's blasphemy, but I think this does look better than Rampart in, um, well, on complete edition. Okay, we go to the Fountain of Youth, which gives us a bit of extra movement, and we are going to keep looking for more resources. We can see skeleton warriors are guarding the sawmill. Lots of skeleton warriors. So one thing about this, I am playing with the HDE mod, which um, is a mod for HD edition, which allows you to do things like quick army splitting. Saves you a bit of time, it's not as good as the HD mod for um, complete edition, but it's pretty much, to me at least, borderline essential uh, for not feeling extremely slow playing on HD edition. Okay, so these guys are not yet in range, so how about we just go for one of these stacks instead, and we're going to wait again. I think we can afford to open this up. Okay, we'll let the skeletons come closer. These are now in range, so we can go for that full powered attack, and then we can hopefully finish them off, which is successful. Pull these guys back, go for the block, bring these guys up, and... This is where things get slightly complicated, because... If we try to move this stack away, they will go for the first aid tent. First aid tent has 75 hit points. Not sure it actually survives the encounter with these two stacks. So I'm tempted just to leave the stack here just to sacrifice them. Although these are in range, so that does make things easier. Okay, let's just let them do what they want. I guess we could escape. Fine. We're going to try and save that. So they choose not to go for the first aid tent at all. We can use our first aid skill, get those back, and we can hopefully finish these off without taking any losses. There we go, so 132 experience, it's not very much, but we can go for the sawmill, and we can go for this, which is going to be important because of course we do want to get the homestead as soon as possible, increase the elf production. Uh, we don't have too much we can do with our gold, I think we just save it. So we're in the turn there, we're going to go to the north. We're going to go for the extra plus one attack skill from the mercenary camp. If we go to the west, there are lots of skeletons guarding the pendant of negativity, which is not really a priority. So we're going to ignore that for now. We're going to go towards the gold, pick that up. Takes us up to 3700, which is enough to pick up an extra hero. So we're going to go for Thorgrim, because he does come with the right type of units. And we do have the option of recruiting centaurs. We're going to put the dwarves behind because they'll slow us down. If we recruit centaurs we could maybe take some fights, but I think first priority is going to be to look for gold. So we can see there's the ore pit just there, guarded by lots of goblins. If I'd taken the extra centaurs I could probably go for that, but I'm not going to risk it. Okay, choice between 2000 and 1500 experience. We're going to go for the experience and we actually already have, didn't even notice that, we already have the Town Hall, so we could go straight for the Homestead, or we could go for Milanda, who comes with a few extra units. I 
think we go really aggressive. We go for Melanda. And I think Melanda goes south. So we can see we're going to need to buy a ship at some point. Let's go for this too in case it tells us a lot about where the artifact is. Is that pretty close to us? I think it might be. I'm going to check this one more time. So in terms of clues, we can see that there is a coast to the east, a coast to the south. So it's probably somewhere around there. Not really sure. It is obviously on the overground though. Okay, so lots of normal orders. Slightly tougher fight, but it does give us the uh, the Ring of Vitality, which is a bit of extra hit points for all of our units. I'm gonna send Thorgrim round. I'm gonna go back to the town. I'm gonna build the homestead. It is gonna stop us being able to afford a ship, but I think that's okay. There's not really too much on the sea. There is a bit, so I think. Going onto the sea does make sense, but don't need to right now, let's focus on the gnolls. So we have spells available to us if we need them, but I'm hoping we don't need to. These we just go defensive, so we're 6 speed, they are 5 speed. We could go kind of aggressive, but I don't think we need to. Okay, Nulls come way forward. We have already moved for this turn, so can't really take advantage of that too much, but we can pretty much finish them off with that. Then I think we go in for the attack. We can heal this off with our first day tent. Oh, I should not have done that. That was a misclick. I thought I had another stack. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Good news is the normal orders are not all going for the tent. Do I move down? So these are five speed, one, two, three, four, five. If we just go for this position. That's annoying. If I knew that was gonna happen, I would have gone more aggressive, but never mind. Okay, this stack is gonna go down as bait. This stack goes for this. We actually finish them off. Rest of our stacks, I think, wait, these guys go back for the block. Because there's five of them, they shouldn't be able to kill off the tent. They do manage to chase us down. Okay. Let's go for the stack of five. These defend. These weaken these some more. These hopefully kill these off. Not quite. Okay, so we take just the one loss. That is definitely worth it. So it's the Ring of Vitality, not the Ring of Life, but same effect. Okay, end the turn there. So 28 days, you would think, should be more than enough. Obviously this map was intended for beginners. So guarded by a horde of troglodytes. I feel like that's doable. If we pass the units across, that should work. And Thorgrim is going to go explore. Okay, so we don't know what we get for this, but... Let's just go for it. HDE mod doesn't have quite as many features. I mean, it does allow you to press space to re-interact, so I did waste a movement point there, but... HDE mod doesn't have as many features as... VHD mod. In fact, not even close. This has a couple of the more useful ones. Okay, these two will wait. Go for a full powered shot on these, and I think... I think we should maybe bait these in. So they're 6 speed, we're also 6 speed. So they can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They can already reach us. They go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They can't reach their stack, so I think we stay put. We want them to go towards the top. And I think we do go for this. Then we go for this. These go for a block. These two stacks wait. Trogs come in. Build these up. Bring this up. So, the first A10 is at risk. We're going to try to hold at least one of these stacks back. Weaken this stack. Not sure what we do here. 
There is an argument for going further towards the bottom. But no, I think we're good. So these guys have five speed. I think we just drag that stack back as far as we can. A little bit worried for the first aid tent. Let's see how much they do. 49 damage. We will probably actually lose it. Okay. Going to try to protect it. Send these down as bait. These do get morale. Fortunately, they do take the bait. Trogs do 18 damage, so almost certainly going to lose the first aid tent. Going to send this stack down. And this too. Then we'll go for this. Then we'll go for this. Hopefully they will choose to attack the wrong stack. Which would be our centaurs. But no, they do finish it off. Okay, that sucks. So it would cost us 750 to get that back. But we have restored the mine to production and it's a gold mine. So that was definitely worth doing. We'll pay for the first aid tent in one turn. Okay, so Heart of the Magi reveals the locations of our opponents. Makes the map a lot simpler. So there's Terminus there, and if we look underground, it's to the west. We can see Galthran just there. He's pretty tough. Surprisingly, Galthran is with Dungeon. Darkstorn also with Dungeon. And Sandro with Necropolis. Okay. So I think we probably go back towards the town, although we could go explore a bit more. We want to get the orpit though. So I think we move towards that. This hero can't really do too much. I guess we'll go to this and scout it out. Then going back to this, not really too much we can afford to do. I'm not going to spend the gold on a miner's guild. Just going to end the turn there. Okay, so they are producing lots of heroes. Let's scout first. So this is a dead end unless we take on lots of pikemen. Let's at least see what's past them. Doesn't reveal too much. Okay, Melander's going to go to this. It gets us basic ballistics. That might actually be kind of useful. We can't afford to go for a ship, so let's go west instead. Expert wisdom. Oh, wow. Okay. I guess she already had advanced wisdom, so it's not like we would have been able to give that to Jem. Um, but yeah, that might have been worth going for. Okay, before we go for this, let's split our stacks. The thing is, with um, scholars, it's always a risk, especially in this version where you can't say no. Um, it's always a big risk. Could end up with a really bad skill. This time, at least, we don't have to worry about an exposed first aid tent. They're only going to come towards our centaurs, and I think we're going to hold them in place. So all stacks go for the bait. Gonna be forced to take our shots, so let's just go for the strongest stack we can. These come all the way towards the top, which is completely fine. Let's weaken them some more. These will go back to the corner. They are still gonna take the bait, that's good. Go for a full powered shot, bring these back. These defend, these come back. These defend. And these come up. Weaken this stack too. This stack waits. I think we just allow them to attack at this point. Although, we'll hold one of them back if we can. Okay, it does work. So we go for this. These two defend. These shoot these. And these finish them off. So three losses in total, that's completely fine. Let's go for the ore pit. Grab ourselves the free ore, start coming back. So 3,700 to spend. Dendrid arches we can afford. Upgraded homestead, really important for making ourselves stronger. Citadel also pretty good. I think for now. Well, dendroids are way too slow, that's the problem. So if we wanted to go for the upgraded homestead, we need find a good source of wood, and we don't know of one. But I think we favor strength. So we're going to go for Dendroid Arches for the immediate power spike. End the turn there. 
Okay, so our opponents are going to sweep up the free resources. Thorgrim's going to start coming back, and Thorgrim is going to be given a very special job. So, question is, do we spend... I was going to say, do we spend our resources on Mage Guild level 2, but we're nowhere near being able to do that. We could go straight for upgraded Dendrites, which the upgrade's pretty bad, but it does take them from 3 to 4 speed. Which is actually quite a big difference when you're that slow. Blacksmith does give us an extra first aid tent if we want to spend the wood on that, but I don't think I do. Okay, I think we go in, and I think we're going to pick these up. We're going to pick these up, and we're going to pick up a few centaurs. So we now have some very slow units, what we want to do is get rid of them if we can. And we go to this. We can. I'm not sure that actually helps us, but it does give us a bit of extra morale. Okay, so Melanda is going to take the slower units. Our fastest units are Wood Elves and Centaurs, so we stick with those. Gem moves up in this direction. Milanda comes through. Thorgrim's actually kind of good where he is, but we'll keep him around. Okay, so we spent all of our gold, we just end the turn there. And what we can do is, if we wait for one more turn, we could go for the upgraded homestead, or in fact I think it might be 15. No, it is 10. So if we wait for one more turn, we can give ourselves 13 Grand Elves, that's a massive power spike, because they shoot twice. Okay. So we could definitely set up a chain that could do that. So it still makes sense to go aggressive, although... I think we do leave these on Thorgrim, for now. Then Gem goes towards the Pikeman, Thorgrim can go mostly back to the town. We're going to claim the Griffin Tower. We're going to pass the units back. What we could even do is wait until day one of week two. Then we get a big power spike. We could even go super aggressive. Maybe I should have picked up ballistics. That might have actually worked quite well. Okay. So Thorgrim stands ready to receive. Do we go for an upgraded building? I don't think we do. I think we save our gold. End the turn there. So we are sacrificing the expansion of our town. Green is already on the water and is claiming some stuff we could use. That's kind of annoying. Okay, so it's Straker. Straker's pretty weak. He's just going to mop up the resources, which kind of sucks. But the important thing is he can't take our town. So we're going to go for Upgraded Homestead. We're going to immediately upgrade these to Grand Elves. Then we're going to funnel them upwards. Pass all of this stuff across. I will actually take the Centaur, just for the speed. Then we'll start coming back. Thorgrim goes underground. Passes the stronger units across. We probably don't need... The slow units. I'm sure we don't. So for the sake of having extra moving points next turn, go in just with this. Yeah, so Grand Elves, incredibly good for clearing the map. Not so good for besieging enemy towns. Still do a nice amount, we get morale. Let's just go for another shot. Then we're going to wait. Let them come closer so we can do full damage. These will defend. These defend. These move away. So, four speed on these. Six speed will take us all the way across to attack them. I'm going to go for the strongest stack with this stack. Then I guess we can finish them off. So yeah, I guess we will. 
stops this deck being able to attack, but that's probably fine. Just gonna wait. Oh yeah, because they are upgraded, they can reach us. Do we go for this? Maybe not. Just gonna close ranks, and then shoot. Yep, that's slightly simpler. Okay, so basic intelligence for extra spell points, or advanced first aid. I'm gonna go for intelligence. And... We could probably go... Very aggressive here. Problem is, we're about to reach a new week, although... That town... Doesn't even have a citadel yet. Which means we don't really need ballistics. If we were to go above ground, we don't know exactly where that leads. There is more wood there, but let's be brave. I hope this links up. Yeah, so it looks like this will lead to our opponent, and with our power spike we should be able to take them on. So what we can do next week is we can pick up an extra hero and funnel more units up. Okay, so in that case, Thorgrim probably doesn't want to go too far. We'll go up to that spot just there, and the turn there. So green does land on our shores, and another green hero gets in a boat, and I'm guessing this is going to be more awkward. Yeah, Sandro is definitely tougher. So in terms of who we can recruit, we've got Uland. Comes with centaurs and dwarves. Verdish comes with the first aid tent, which is actually very tempting. Plus, we do already have some gnolls. I might actually go for Verdish. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the game's trying to tell us something. Okay, so we go for Verdish, we pick up even more Grand Elves, and... We're just going to funnel these up. So, swap the units, swap the artifacts, start coming back to defend. Melanda goes up. Passes all of this across. Remember, if we were playing on the original game, we would have a... four-week time limit. So I am trying to do this in as few turns as possible. I don't feel any guilt about hero chaining. Is sometimes necessary on impossible difficulty. Okay, so do we need the slow units this turn? Possibly not. Well, the difference between 3 speed and 4 speed isn't massive. I think we just take everything. Okay, Gem is going to go straight west, and we can see that we're not going to be able to reach our opponents. They're almost certainly not going to take us on. So, a bit unfortunate we have the slow units, but never mind. Let's go straight towards their town. And let's end the turn there. I'm predicting that green is going to go aggressive. But if we just spend all our golden defenders, we can hopefully make that work. Okay. So this is blue. We don't really care about protecting Thorgrim. We're just gonna let these units get killed. That's bad morale, that's good to know. Okay, let Thorgrim go. Green does land. And, yeah, because we've got the slow units, we can't reach. That's really annoying. Okay. So, we're going to need to try and defend this. I'm not sure we'll be able to. Going for the Citadel would be good, but... We have not enough gold to make that work. And Sandro's going to come straight for us. So, I think what we need to do... Does Verdish start with a spell, but yes. Okay, that's good. We could pick up some Griffins. First, let's see what we can afford. Pretty sure we'll end up spending everything on dendroids. Yeah, three dendroid guards, then... I guess dwarves might be slightly more cost-efficient as defenders. Nine of those. That's all our gold gone. We might lose the town. But... We'll hopefully make up for it by getting another. Okay, let's just go straight towards this. Then Verdish 
just has to try and stay safe. And the turn there. So green, I think, will go aggressive. Yeah, it does. That kind of sucks. So unfortunately, we don't have any great means to damage this guy. We have no citadel, so we can't do damage from our towers. This thing does 30 points of damage, which is not enough to kill off two, and they do regenerate, so I don't think we go for that just yet. I think we move these up. No spell points, that's good to know. Just going to go for a block. Yeah, not completely sure how we do this, but I think these are four speeds, so one, two, three, four. We want to make sure we don't go to this spot, but we can go to this spot. Okay, they come slightly closer. These will defend. Next round begins. These stacks will wait. They go for that, so they are... Let's see, one, two, three, four. We can reach them. So this stack waits. This stack... We'll choose not to attack this round. These go in to absorb the retaliation. These go forward as a block. These go forward as another block. Then I think we do go for Magic Arrow. And then we go for this before they can regenerate. Okay, so we take them down to 7. Might as well do a small amount of extra damage. So they've not yet regenerated, they have 1 health left. We're going to absorb the retaliation. Do kill one off too. That completely works out. Magic Arrow again. And let's move down. Okay, first block goes down, we can finish off the whites. These things have three speeds, so they go one, two, three, they can reach us, I think we move back. Then we can go super aggressive. Does that work? I think the AI is not smart enough. Well, Walking Dead can go one, two, three. So yeah, there's no easy way to take advantage of this. And I think, actually... We're 4 speed, they're 3 speed on those. So we can maybe get away from the walking dead. Not sure if this will work. We'll see. Yeah, that was not the one to go for. Do we try and move away? The thing is, we can't escape the skeletons. But... I think we still try and get away from the walking dead. Might regret this. So how are we doing for hit points? We are doing okay. Okay, gonna check the log just to make sure. Hmm. We move back. Okay, so this round, we're gonna wait. That stat can't reach us. I think we do absorb the retaliation. Yeah, my strat here didn't really work. Um, so stone skin, let's have a look. Two spell power lasts for two rounds. Magic arrow is probably just better. And then we go for these. So we bind them in place, we do get to attack again. Magic arrow this attack once again. And then we go for this. 
And yeah, no way we win this, not even close. Okay, not good, but we can hopefully get back there before the end of the week. This is now defended. We don't know what it's defended by, but it should be something we're capable of beating. I am going to split this into an extra stack just in case they have a Citadel, because the Citadel will always go for the, the bottom range stack. Okay. So there's still no Citadel, that's the good news. I think we go for these. Okay, they're going to focus on those stacks, that's completely fine. I think we move these up. Magic carry this. I can't remember who's been hurt. This guy. Okay. These move down as a block. Won't really work, but that's fine. These go up to block these. Harpies can actually reach the gnolls. Okay. Let's go for these next. Do lose our first Grand Elf. Okay, Centaurs will finish off the Trogs, so let's focus on these instead. These start moving across. Magic carry this. Weaken this some more. And we don't currently have a way in. But keep weakening these. Should now have a way through. Okay, so we don't get morale, but this will be a victory. So we're going to lose one town and replace it with another. Unfortunately, the town we're replacing with is definitely worse. Okay, but we do still have a full power stack of 19 Grand Elves. We can go for basic water magic, which is interesting. I'm going to go for advanced wisdom. And yeah, there's not too much in here. What we can do is we can go for the mana vortex. Get all our spell points back and then double them. Blue will come back to attack us. And that is a problem. So there's Darkstorm and Geon. So what we want to do is we want to get the Citadel and we want some basic defenders. So we don't have enough gems for this, we don't have enough sulfur for this. So the best way to defend it is just to use our main. So we go back, we get all of our extra spell points and... Do we risk going out with just the Grand Elves? I think for one thing we do send Melanda underground because she is otherwise very threatened. I think if we had another hero nearby, it would be an easier choice. I'll leave the Dendroids and the Dwarves. And in fact, I think we just leave all the slow units. And this should still be enough. So we're going to go towards the spell power. End the turn there. Ah, I forgot about this guy. Okay. Well, Melanda was not in a great situation. We do lose her. But Blue currently has no town. Should be going aggressive. Now we have a dilemma, because... There's a good chance these two come back to fight us. But we do have 3,000 we can spend. So we could just buy the Citadel, and I think... We have left enough there. To hold that off. Cartographer there is an interesting one, we can spend a thousand to reveal the underground, but don't really need to, I think we do go towards our original town. We want to try and get there before day one of next week, or in fact day two, because on our day one they won't have recruited yet. Not sure we have time, but we have to try. 
Okay, so it's day four. Do we go straight for the Citadel? I think we probably don't need to. We should have some warning if they come through. Can I turn there? So Blue knows they have to try and get the town back, but they also know they're not strong enough to take us on, so they're just going to sit in front of us instead. So this is going to be probably slightly painful, but we do have lots of spell points. This guy hopefully doesn't. Okay, he has seven spell points, we can maybe go for one spell. The holders are split into three different stacks. I think we go for these. Gonna go for the usual block. Might lose the first aid tent, but that's not the end of the world. These will be a distraction. Okay, it does go for the magic area, so we do lose a couple of grand elves to that, that kinda sucks. Problem with this is we need to be strong enough to take our town back. Hmm. I think we wait. Yeah, so we take some damage there, but that's probably okay. Okay, these two move towards us. Get our hit points back. These can go forward and go aggressive, but no, we're going to stay back. Then these two are in range, these two aren't. Let's go for these because it's their native terrain. Those miss their turn through morale. Okay. First aid tent still has most of its hit points left. It's probably overkill to go for this. These things have seven speeds. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They can actually reach. That's kind of a problem, but maybe I'm overthinking this. The hog goblins should survive the round. So I'm going to go for these. Then we wait. These defend. These go down kind of as bait. So hopefully the Hobgoblins will go for those. We could go for the Skeletons. But we need to get pretty close. I'm going to try and avoid using spell points. Okay, let's go for these. That thing does survive as expected. Harpies will hopefully go for the Centaurs, but yeah, 16 hit points on that, maybe not. Still, we definitely go for this. Actually, because we didn't finish that stack off, we should be safe from the Harpies. And they missed their turn. But losses here are not looking good. Here we go for these. Okay, so Harpies, this is not an easy choice. Can we cure the tent? We can. Is that extreme? I'm going to try it. Casting cure in a first aid tent. Hopefully that now survives the round. These have five speed, so I actually do want to be in their range. This should be okay. Want them to attack the centaurs, which they do. Okay, Harpies do 23 damage. Let's try and weaken these some more. Kill these off. So if they did 23 damage, we go for Cure again. No? Yes. Not sure why they didn't come up first. Back up to 33 hit points. Gonna send these across. Ah, but we are actually in range with the Centaurs. Okay. So, we do still have most of our Grand Elves. These go defensive. These come down. These heal these up. Then we finish them off. Okay, so 1,200 experience. We do at least level up. We can get to advanced first aid, so good thing we kept that first aid tent alive. Uh, I can't believe I actually used Kira in a first aid tent. That is definitely a first. 
Okay, so Straker is not strong enough to take us on. Sandro, I think, is also going to be fine. I'm still going to go super aggressive, because I think we can. Then these two should be coming for us. I think we take the plunge and buy the Citadel. In terms of recruitable units, there is nothing left, so we end the turn there. Blue does come to attack us, but can't quite reach, and green has even more heroes. Question is, are they a threat? So yeah, Vidomina, I think, is a threat. That's kind of scary. This town should be okay. I think we split these up. So what we can do is we can pick up an extra hero. So Alkin doesn't come with many units. Uland at least does. I think to be safe, we need to recruit him. And we're going to set up pretty similar to before. Okay. We're going to see how this goes. So going back to Gem. A little bit worried. But we do have 34 spell points. We have advanced first aid. We have a first aid tent. We have the ring of life. Pretty decent spells for week two. Okay, so we can afford to go for something like the Battle Scholar Academy, but I think we need to hang on to our gold. So, end the turn there. Blue will come to attack, but we should be able to hold this off. Citadel should make this quite doable. Goes for Magic Care on those 50 points of damage, and can go for four more of those, that's not good. Yeah, so very likely to lose Dendrites. Okay, Medusas go down. We do lose our first Dendroid. Harpies go for the one stack, which is kind of surprising. These are going to go and block this up. These defend, and we're just going to magic arrow this stack. It's the most immediate threat. These defend, these defend. These will also defend. Okay, so they are going to be forced to cross the moat, which is going to be quite unpleasant for them. Although, actually, this is, yeah, this is HD edition where the moat doesn't do any damage. So the moat is not helping us at all. These have higher defense, so they are the obvious target for magic arrow. This is going to be close. I'm actually a bit worried. I can go for one more magic arrow. Going to weaken the strongest stack we can. These are five speeds, so that's... can't really tell. This is a hex, so that's one, two, three, four, five. If we go down to here, we should be safe for one round. I'm gonna rely on the Citadel to help us out a lot. Still match carry these, I think. These go for a block. Not sure how much that really helps us, so we lose the Dendroids. These stay defensive. These go for this. These pull back. This stack is very difficult to keep safe. Yeah, so it's pretty much impossible to keep this safe, so the choice is do we go aggressive or... Actually, we can outspeed them. So we can just move away. And wow, they're actually going to try and chase us down. So that doesn't make a lot of sense, but I won't complain. Gonna go defensive with these. Halberdiers are now the immediate threat, and they're still very scary for us. Ah, I didn't think they could reach us there. Okay. 
So these defend, these shoot these. These still defend. These move up. Citadel is choosing the wrong choice of target. Okay, two left. At this point, I'm going to be forced to go for the attack. Okay, so how long should this hold out? We've still got a bit more wall. Do we go for this? I think we do. They're level 1, we're level 2. So, should still be able to 1v1 them. Catapult does go for our tower, but no success just yet. Problem with this is we still need to we still need to hold someone else off. Although they were pretty weak. So we win. It wasn't easy. Okay, let's go for expert wisdom. And let's see. So there's green. We've still got two more days until they can re-recruit. So we don't want them to forge their units together. A pack of... whites. We could just go straight for the town. And if we do, we can afford the citadel. So that's how we handle this. Okay, so this hero has 20 spell points, a sorcery specialist, so kind of threatening in that sense. No range units. Has picked up our griffins, but we're just going to weaken those. They're going to be forced to come out. We're just going to form a big block. I'm a bit worried about the spell casting, but so far they've not gone for it. There we go. They do have magic area. It was too much to hope they didn't. Next round begins. Let's magic area these again, and let's wait. So these can absorb two retaliations. I think we just stay defensive. The rest of the units do start to come forward. This guy is really weakening us fast. He can still go for two more as well. So that's pretty bad. Problem is we have to hold off the whites and everything else as well. Okay, one magic carry left. Is 10 Grand Ales enough to hold off the whites? I hope so. We will have the Citadel, of course. Okay, that was the final attack. So as long as we can block these off, should be okay for now. These will wait. Okay, situation's looking kind of bad. I think it's clear what we need to do. We need to try and kite. So we are the fastest on the field. These two have three speed, these have four speed because they're native terrains, that's one, two, three, four. We want to go down. We do get morale, so that's really lucky. Start moving across. I think we hold these back as bait against the dwarves. So 25 spell points. Do we need to start going for stuff like that? If we wait, they can reach us. So unfortunately, I think we have to go in this direction. But that doesn't really work, so the dwarves, of course. Let's see if we can bait with these in the opposite direction. I guess, looking at that, they will focus on the catapult. 
So these are three speed, one, two, three. So if we move across to here, that's the best we can do. Still trying to save those spell points. They are going to go for the first aid tent. That's annoying. Do we just let that go? 54 hit points to go. Okay, we're going to finish these off. Then it's one, two, three. They can still reach us. That's annoying. Move up to here. I'm going to try and bait these. I don't think it'll work. Does it actually work? Okay. So, three hit points to go. I'm going to try curing. How much does that help? 23 hit points. We can go for a full powered attack here. We kill three dwarves off. These will now attempt to move away. First A10 does survive. Let's go for this again. So they're down to one dwarf. Let's go for this. Then we wait. They're going to try and move up. We're just going to defend. We're going to shoot. Do get morale. Wow, that was slightly nerve-wracking, and we've still got potentially tougher things ahead. We do reach level 5, and oh my, we can't get into the town. That's a disaster. Nothing available to recruit. We can't afford to go for Citadel and a hero. I was really hoping we could reach. Do we have a marketplace in this town? We do. So if we spend, no, even if we trade everything, we can't afford both a hero and a citadel. So what can we do? So a pack of this stuff, if she has no spell points whatsoever, that might kind of work, but almost certainly won't. There's also Iona. Straker can't reach us. Wow, this is really unfortunate. Also, neither of these do come with units. But a citadel without any units to defend doesn't serve any purpose. Can't afford the enchanted spring. So, I think we have to decide can we hold this town with a hero and some units and a fort but no citadel? Maybe not. Okay, difficult situation. What could we do with Uland? So Geon, in theory, could be a threat. There's no access to any other resources in the immediate term. But I think Uland does have some spells he can cast, so we're going to go up to this. We're going to at least claim this. We do get 14 trogs for that. Then we have to decide what to do with this. Super frustrating situation because it's so incredibly borderline. I think we chance that we can take Vitamina on. If we have to retreat, that's fine. We're gonna try it. So she does come for us, she does have 10 of these. Spell points, 9 spell points. I was hoping she'd have none. Our magic carry does 40 points of damage, that's pretty good. Kills off two whites per shot. Wait for now. There's a very small, almost infinitely small chance she doesn't have magic carry. She does. Kills off one. I'm not sure how much that cost her. Okay, we bring back 14 hit points. Forced to go for an attack. Let's just go for these, hope for at least one kill, which we do get this time round. We're going to wait. All of our stacks. I'm going to send these out as bait. And these.
Then we can go for this at full strength. And we do get morale, so that really works out. At this point, we start defending. These go back as bait. Might not even need to. Okay, so stack of 37 is more or less dealt with. Kill these off. Going to actually save our spell points, I think. So these are four speed. So they can go one, two, three, four. They cannot reach us. These will defend. So one, two, three, four. We got to here. These wait. These wait too. Skeletons do take the bait because the AI is not very clever. How are we doing for ammo? Doing okay. Not amazing. So one, two, three, four, they still can't reach us. Vitamina fleas. So we took the one loss. Green is not brave enough to take someone with anyone else, and that was incredibly important, winning that. Like, I was starting to think, we might have to face ourselves from the dungeon town, and this could go on for a really long time. But, everything works out. We have Alagar, who comes with extra units. We have 8,000 to spend. We have 20 spell points, which we could try and do something with. We can also get into the ship. How many movement points do we have? So I think we do go really aggressive. Terminus does have a castle, so that's a bit of a concern. I think we should pick up Alagar. We should upgrade these. And if we're going to assault a town, there's an argument for the Griffin Tower. Okay, first off, Alagar back into the town. Gem goes in. Gonna take as many units as we can. Alagar goes out. So to recruit these, it costs 1400. Let's just say yes. Let's start bringing them down. Uland can re-interact with this because we have the HDE mod, which allows us to do that. Blue is technically still in the game, but should time out. Let's go for this. So we can see where the Grail is. That's probably got to be done. Don't normally go for the Grail, but if it's going to tell us where to go... We'll go for Ignatius, he does come with a nice stack of 60 of these, which is not entirely pointless. Okay, so the Grail, we should be safe for at least one turn. Let's make sure we get the exact correct spot. So the correct spot is... One spot above the tree and one to the right. So it should be this one right here. So Ignatius goes there. Go back into the town. Can't afford everything, but that's okay. Leave the slow units behind. Then, I think we go straight for this. Neither of these two should attack us. Could also go for this, which should be fine. Do we go for ballistics? The thing is, it slows us down by one turn, so I think no. Okay, end the turn there. So blue springs back to life, but doesn't really do too much. Green is trying to recover. Ulan's just going to go into the town. Should be able to hold that completely fine. So Ignatius is going to dig. We have successfully uncovered the Grail.
Alagar goes into the town, we're going to pick up as many units as we can. So let's finish off these. Let's go for, I think, Dendroids. Then choice between Centaurs and Dwarves. I think I just want meat for this fight, although we can afford both. Okay, so we've got as many units as we possibly can. Let's go down. Oh, no way. Oh, maybe if I'd gone to that as well, I could have done it. Oh, that's so frustrating. That's going to cost us an entire turn. What else can we do in the sea in the meantime? Not a lot. Uh, if we were to trade all of our resources... So, these guys... Did at least buy the marketplace, so we should get a slightly better rate. But still nowhere near good enough. Fine, okay. So if we did go for this, it's currently unguarded. Vitamina will go back. We could get into a ship. With someone else. It's so long-winded for the sake of saving one turn. Not sure it's worthwhile. Plus, she has a pack of vampires, so... Gotta play it safe. What else could we do on the sea? We could do some more exploring. But no, I think we just accept that the turn is gone. Blue is going to be aggressive. Green lands on our shores. Blue has officially timed out. Okay, painful situation, but these things happen. Still pretty pleased with how this is going overall. Let's just take all the units we can. So Gem also didn't pick up any spell points, but she does have 22, which is not too bad. We can maybe cut off their hero before they get back to the town. Plus there's an Idol of Fortune, which will slightly help us. Okay, so we land. Ignatius brings the Grail back to our town. The Grail has been installed, which is going to increase our luck by plus two, plus it's a ton of extra growth in our towns, plus, or in this town at least, plus a lot of extra gold per turn. Okay, so Alagar, I guess we'll go and get us our sawmill back. Then we go back to this, and this could still be attacked. Though Labyrinth's still not happening anytime soon, I think we go for Upgraded Chapel. End the turn there. And yeah, we can see Green is still prowling around, but can get back to their town. This is... Uncomfortable. I think what we need to do is bring these two together. Take off a one stack. They don't have any range units, so they should come out. Worst case scenario, we might have to try this twice. Yeah, because there's a full-on castle in there which is going to make this a lot worse. There's a chance we're not ready, but I'm going to try it. Oh wow, okay. So because there's another hero in the town, we actually get to fight this as two separate battles. It's also cursed ground, so we can't cast spells. I didn't even pick up on that. So she does have 20 spell points. I should have probably waited. Oh well. Let's try and make her think that these are a threat. I don't know if she'll fall for it. But I want her to cast magic error on these instead. See if she does. Did she just not cast? I'm surprised. Okay, this time around I'm going to wait. So their 4 speed, this is not actually their native terrain, it looks like it should be, but it's not. So 1, 2, 3, 4, they can't reach us. Please go defensive. Oh, she's... Of course, she can't cast Magic Arrow because it's Cursed Ground for her as well. 
It's wondering why she didn't cast. There we go. So Curse Ground actually helps us as much as it hinders us. And we're going to go for basic water magic because it makes magic area cheaper, although that didn't really help us at all because of course this is also on Curse Ground. I think the native terrain should override it. We'll see. So yeah, there is a defender in the town. We do take quite a few losses to the towers already. Curse Ground does affect us here too, so I don't think we win this. That's unfortunate. We can still surrender. I think the odds are really against us. I don't see any reason to be stupid. We could still use those units. So we have to wait until start of next week. Need to get another ship as well. Okay, so in the meantime we can go for upgraded Dendroid Arches, Citadel there for a bit of extra growth if we want to. We just have to make use of our resources. So this will give us Sulfur, which doesn't really help us too much. This gives us Crystal. What we need is Gems. So the goal of course is to win this before Day 7 of Week 4. I think what we should do is at least go and claim some more resource production. So if we look above ground, this guy has got back in his ship. We need to get gem back of course. So we do have the option of getting gem back in this town and we could maybe come to the south there, try and attack from this direction, but I don't think that really helps us. So we're going to get her back in this town. That was the wrong that was the wrong hero, and that was a waste of 2,500 gold. That sucks. Okay, well we at least claim this, and there is actually a ship there that I forgot about. So we get some kind of use out of that. We get our units back, and yeah, I think we have to wait until next week. Not much we can do with the 500 gold, we could do a very small amount, but probably not worthwhile. We'll go to this for the extra movement and a bit of extra morale. And the Curse Ground really complicates this. We have to set up a hero chain that involves boats. I think that's how it's got to be done. So we need to save at least 10 wood. What else could we do? Probably not much to be honest. There's the abandoned mine which they did steal. Let's send Ignatius for that. Okay, so green does have presence near to our dungeon town, so we need to make sure we do at least take the defense there kind of seriously. So yeah, Strake is not a threat. Okay, Ulan first. We're going to go for this, and we've already got the defense from that, so let's start coming back. don't really think there's too much else we could claim. We could go for the Sawmill, which probably is worth a risk. Ignatius gets this back, and of course with the Grail we should have a lot of extra production kicking in next week. So everything's pretty affordable, I think we go Citadel first, this time for the growth. We need to try and hang on to our wood, but we can do a bit of trading if we need to. We could even trade some gold, that's quite affordable at this point. Okay, so I think Chana is going to sail down to an approachable point. She could be attacked, but probably have to risk that. Do we get straight in the ships with Gem? I think because we can't use spell points in this fight anyway, we maybe do. Thing is, we're kind of stuck here for a week either way, but I think it still makes sense to go for this. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and... Ah, it's still so expensive. Go for four of these, way too expensive. So we've got to wait for at least one turn. Okay, let's not overthink this. Key thing is, we want to finish this before the end of week four. So we might have to hunt a couple of heroes down. But that's okay. If we go back to this, I think we go for the upgraded warren, although that does cost us wood, and wood is the limiting factor. 
Perhaps what we do in that case is... We land with Chana. End the turn there. So two more days to go. We go back to this. We go for Dendroid Saplings. And next turn, I think we go for the castle. Then we have a massive group of units to buy straight away. Probably still want to build this up, but yeah, I really don't think there's a way we can do it realistically. So if Ulan goes above ground, we can see there is Straker. We want to go for this. And I think we want Ulan to be able to go out and attack too, although we could pick up an extra hero for that. So I think maybe Ulan just lurks. That should be okay. Then Gem. Chana needs to move. So Chana goes through. I think the thing that's worrying me now, if we want to beat that four week limit, is we do need to hunt them down. Okay. So Gem is in the ship. Alagar makes sure he is not too far away. End the turn there. Green is coming towards us quite aggressively, it does land up there, that's fine. So if we look back underground, Iona's not a threat. So it's day 7. We want to go for the castle in this town. Then moving back across to this. Not really too much we can do, mushroom rings will at least give us a small amount of extra production. We are producing enough gold that I think that's fine. So I think Uland starts coming back. And we're going to try and chase Iona down. Then Gem is good where she is, Chana is also good where she is. Can't pick up any extra units, so can't really speed ourselves up too much. I guess Ignatius... Ignatius can go in instead. Just because he's slightly faster and I can't be bothered to sort the units. Okay, so of course going into the next fight we do have a bit of extra luck from our Grail. But the growth of the units should be enough on its own. Okay, so a little bit slow going, but after this we can go super aggressive. So green's going to try and run off, that's really annoying but not unexpected. Next week begins. So we probably do want at least a few units left behind to help us chase down our opponents and kill them, but... I guess if we just go Dendroids and Grand Elves. Maybe we leave the Centaurs be. Still got loads of resources we can spend. Question is, are we definitely strong enough with those two stacks? What we can do is we can at least upgrade the archers. So Dendroid Soldiers, like I said, not a very good upgrade, but does make them that a little bit tougher, and we should win just on might. Melodia has a few extra units if we want those. I guess we can go for the centaurs. And of course we can get griffins too. Okay, I'm not going to overcomplicate this, I think we already have enough here. Let's take the Dendroids too, because why not? Then Gem goes straight to the south. We can see Vitamina just there. So hopefully the town's actually pretty undefended. Let's move the slow units towards the top. And they're going to be blockers. This should be fine. And this way we can actually make some use of our spells. So Magic Arrow now only costs us 4, go for it straight on these, and that was probably unnecessary because we might be able to finish them off, but I'm just going to wait. Goes for Magic Arrow on those, which makes almost no sense. Uh, the Liches are going to go for the first A tent, which kind of sucks. These are 6 speed, these are 6 speed too, I think we just move up. Although we are in range, but never mind. Don't really mind if they go for the Imps. 
Just going to make sure the liches don't. Of course, the liches can cause problems if we bunch up, but I'm willing to risk it. So, first aid tent, who needs to be healed? This guy apparently one hit point of damage. That does slow things down a bit. Okay, I'm going to attack these because I just want them dealt with and nobody else is in full range. So let's just go for the strongest stack we can, which is these. They do come forward and attack that stack, that's completely fine. These guys have five speed, so I think we just pull these back. I will go for the attack. And we finish them off. Let's magic arrow these. Please defend. So we don't have to worry about Lich splash attacks. Let's heal whoever we can. These guys again. Please wait. Please defend. These will pull back. Still magic carries those. That is completely fine. No one can reach us. So just going to defend. Heal these up. These are now in range, so we kill those off, and let's go for these. Please defend, please kill these off. Please move away. And Vitamina Fleas. So, that is hopefully what would have been the opposing defenders dealt with. Now what we also need to do is we need to chase down the others. So. We have a choice of these two. Verdish actually does come with yet another first aid tent, but we don't really need that. Go for Melodia, and we're just going to pick up a good supply of units. We want to leave some defenders behind. So that's all of our gold gone for now. So the units we leave behind, I think 12 dwarves and 28 trogs should hold things down. Then we start moving up. Ulan comes through, we pass all the units across. So Ulan is hopefully just about fast enough to go super aggressive. Melodia starts moving back. Do you want to take this guy on of course, Straker. So best way to do that. Probably Chana. In fact, not Chana, I think. I think we get Verdish back. So what Chana can do is Chana can go and pick up some Griffins. Okay. End the turn there. So at this point, it is hopefully a case of just hunting our opponents down. Unfortunately, they are going to scatter to the winds, which is going to be really annoying. It is really tempting to go for this, but I think we need to focus on the town. So, several black knights, several vampires, several liches, and a castle. With no spells to use, I'm a little bit worried about this. We do get some extra morale from that. So, I think we do want to have positive morale going into this fight. I'm going to actually dismiss the imps. And we're going to split off one Grand Elf, which is bait for the towers. Should be better than nothing. Is there anything else we can do to strengthen ourselves? I don't think so. I think we need to go for this. Okay, we'll see how it goes. So towers do take the bait. And we can already see they're probably going to go defensive. So... I think we attack these before these attack us. Do kill two off. And we want them to try and come out. So if we were to send these forward, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty much no way they attack us. This stack is one, two, three, four, five. Again, not going to attack us. We just go straight forward and okay. That was unexpected. Thought they were going to go fully defensive there. 
if we can actually kill these off on the spot, or even just occupy that hex, we'll be in a really good place. So let's hope for morale, because we want to get in. We don't actually have ranged advantage here because the towers will kill off our Grand Elves pretty quick. Okay, we're going to heal these up. Still looking like they want to go fairly aggressive. Just going to send these all the way forward. And yeah, you can see how quickly the towers shred through our Grand Elves. So the Liches can probably resist us. Whereas these should take a bit more damage. I am tempted to go for them. These are four speed, so one, two, three, four. They can't reach. If one of our units dies on the bridge, the bridge should stay open. I think I still want to go for these. They worry me the most. Then this stack I think waits, although... Yeah, we really do want to occupy the bridge. So I will risk going for this. Even if we lose this stack. This stack apparently cannot attack and go into the moat at the same time. That's still a thing. So if we go up and occupy this hex, the liches can cause us some problems. These can go 1, 2, 3, 4, which is nowhere near close enough. I think we do go in like this. And these have actually put themselves in range, really surprised by that. Find them to the ground. Should send these forward, but of course, don't want to make things too easy for the liches, so let's stay a little bit apart from each other. These are most of their hit points. Still the obvious choice. So most of the Grand Elves are gone. We have got a way through. We can attack these at full strength. I think we need to do that. Take the chance. So just one of these left. Do we go for this stack instead? The thing is, we do want the bridge to stay down. So maybe we don't. If we go straight for it with the Dendroids, that could also be good. Although, these have three speeds, so one, two, three. That probably works. The thing is, if we go to attack this, I think vampires move next, they will probably go for a different stack. Then the bridge closes. I'm gonna go for this. Oh, the bridge closes anyway. Okay, I didn't think that's how that works. Well. Okay, I'm just gonna go for the vampires. This stack will wait. These start moving across. These move up. 32 hit points come back to the dendroids, and we are going to be forced to make a move here, I think. I think we just play it safe, kill these off. And that didn't go too well because we are now in range of the liches, but black knights actually come out to attack us. Liches will get to move pretty soon. Let's still go for this, of course. Liches do choose the obvious targets. So we are now going to wait. This stack waits too. This stack also waits, and this stack is going to absorb retaliation. It was one point of damage. Seriously? They really needed some health back too. That's pretty cruel. Okay, these go for this. Again, it is a safe attack. Grand Elves still survive for now. Let's go for this once again. Then I think we just go ahead and hit. Then we hit once again. So, 22 hit points to go. If we go for this, I think we do finish them off. Again, not going to make things too easy for the Liches. They have most of their health left, so let's... Well, they're still the obvious choice. Go for those. Towers are now going for the Centaurs. I'm going to try and weaken these. And we are just going to try and send the Dendroids super aggressively forward. 
these go for this. So we've got 10 dendroids left, that's pretty good. Let's heal these up. Do we just go straight across? No, I think we go for this. Don't quite kill them off. Next round begins. Centaur's pretty close to being killed off. Do we go for these instead? I think we do. So they go for the double attack. Dendroids are safely able to go forward. I never know which of these two hexes it is. I think it's this one. But I always forget. Okay, forced to heal up the dwarves. We do lose the last of our Grand Elves, but they can't really do too much to stop us moving in at this point. So we go in. Go for the melee stack. Liches will have a penalty against us. Heal these back up. And it is going to be down to the Dendroids to win us this battle. Okay. So, we got pretty lucky there. I think that could have gone a lot worse. It wasn't entirely organized. But, we got some good stuff in this town. Is there anything we can instantly recruit? No. So I think we go for Verdish. And let's make this awkward for them. So we don't want them to escape. So I think Verdish comes through. Gem is going to pass these across. Just going to try this. So we can reach. We should have some spells we can go for. Just want to deal with this as soon as we can. So they should have no towns left, which should force them to go pretty aggressive. Waste their magic arrows on that, that's completely fine. Yeah, we shouldn't need to even go for spells. Okay, we kill those off. Okay, so what's next? Need to go for Iona. Who else could be attacked? So there's Straker just there. Don't think it's possible to reach. No, not going to be possible. Although, if we go for this, has to be with Alagar, of course. Yeah, I think that's still not enough. Plus, we do need more units. Okay, trying to get seven of these. And, yeah, pretty sure this is not going to work. So we're going to go for this. Okay, Chana passes across the Griffins, then moves out the way. Alagar goes for this. Oh, it doesn't work, because we've already been there before, apparently. Okay, never mind. So who else can we pick up, and what else can we do? So we've got Harpies, we've got Troglodytes, we're going up against, let's have a look. Just Skeletons, simple Skeletons. We could use Melodia. But, I think we want to optimize our moving points. So we'll go for Rion, because we seem to be really enjoying our first day tents in this playthrough. Get some Trogs, get some Harpies. Then I think we pass these across. Probably overkill, but that's fine. Melodia goes up, and if this guy goes anywhere near the shore, we should be able to target him. So we ideally want to wrap this up within five days. Let's have a look at Thieves Guild. Straker is apparently their strongest, so yeah, there's no one who's going to surprise us lurking around. Let's end the turn there. 
So the question is, are we allowed to attack from the shore? Yes, we are. Let's go for it. And let's magic arrow. So is that the last of their heroes? No. There's still someone else. Of course there is. I even know who they are. Okay. So this one is the target of Uland. And this one should be even more straightforward. Magic arrow once again. So Iona is defeated, Green is defeated, and we have done it with four days to spare. Pretty lucky there in that fight against the town. That could have gone worse, but fortunately we did manage to successfully bait them into going aggressive, which meant we could do it within the time limit. Anyway, that's Dead and Buried, the original demo map. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you'd like to see more one-off Heroes 3 map playthroughs, I do have a playlist link in the description. On that playlist you will find videos of any map I have completed within one episode. As always, do subscribe if you'd like to see more from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.